Regarding stairs, regarding bad load-ins, uh, particularly physically demanding load-ins, which is something that most uh -huh. drummers can't stand. Do you actually like bad load-ins? Uh-huh. Why? What? Uh, I'm, I'm a fitness model. Joe. When I think about doing gigs as a drummer, which is part of the reason why I started playing keyboards, carrying your drum kit up flights of stairs for a gig never was appealing to me. The whole, at the end of the night when everybody else is finished and going home, I'm still there with the crickets outside because we was doing an outside festival because I'm packing up because I brought drums and ain't nobody want to help. Gig perks? I don't know. Gig woes? Yeah, I got gig woes, for sure. First off, all the ladies love the drummers. <laughs> That's like the best thing ever. I played a gig in Berkeley. The musical college? No, no. No, the, the city full of crazies. And it was two people in the audience. These two women oh. dancing. It was, it was beautiful. Two perks. <clears throat> I had never witnessed woman love like that. I mean, the only perk you get is like beating on stuff. I mean, let me clear the air. Let, let's break this myth once and for all. Oh, the drummer, he gets the girls. Them girls are stuck up. They didn't come there to see you. They came there to see the artists you play for. And believe me, we know. You're the show. People come to see you and have a good time. A general misconception is that the musicians get to live that party life and get to enjoy that crowd. But the reality of it is you play all night long and that crowd enjoys it, has a good time, and usually by the time you're done, they're gone. Denied. You have work left to do. Break down your kit, pack up your stuff, get to your room, try to get a place to sleep, try to get something to eat. By that time, it's like four in the morning. You're done. Day's over. <laughs> Aww. When I went to Europe, the nice thing about Europe is that the pros is that they are required there to give you a place to stay. You know, a lot of times the place you'd actually sleep was at the gig. So you, we'd literally finish and literally the story above where I played, I would just be sleeping in a really comfortable apartment. Oh, okay. That's convenient. And it is convenient. Mm -hmm. The United States isn't like that. No. I always do be on a gig where the keyboard player or the bass player or somebody is playing slower than the tempo of the music. And then they want you to just fluctuate down into their tempo, but you want to just stay right there. And they be like, where you at? Why you ain't with me? No, you supposed to stay right there. I'm the drummer. I'm the internal clock. Chill with your boy. <laughs> I know where we going. The number one gig woe is having to haul your equipment. That is the absolute worst if you're a drummer because our stuff is the heaviest. Yeah, I've played lots of um, shoot holes. <laughs> shoot holes. Shoot holes, I guess I'll call shoot them. Shoot holes. But you walk in and it's literally just the wallpaper is urine. That's it. I mean, you know, the walls is forever. Forever, forever in the day, you gotta carry gear, you gotta be there before everybody, you gotta break down. Oh, the breakdown. The breakdown, don't nobody help you either. Like, people in the band see you breaking down and just be like, all right, man, I'm heading home because all I have to do is carry this one thing. See you next time. F you, man. F you. It sucks to play at a really nice venue where they have five-star catering. You're usually playing all night long, so you don't ever get a chance to eat that food. And by the time you get off stage, the kitchen is closed. I've learned that when crew guys say it's a weird load-in, that usually means, you know, three flights of stairs. It's pretty much a free pass to the gym. So yeah, stairs are a major pain. Stairs are a pain. I actually, I like it, you know. It's just another way of harboring this discipline. I'm trying to tone my thighs. I don't have no gig perks for the drummer, other than after the kit is set up, I get to play. That's it, because I like the drums. After that, you know, I gotta break down. Hey, maybe some of you out there enjoy breaking down the kit. Maybe you like that. Maybe you like when everyone else is gone and you're still twiddling the doggone thing off the cymbal so you can put your cymbal in the bag. Nobody else is there to see you do it. Maybe that's the part that you love. Maybe you get to commune with your drum kit by yourself when everybody else is at home because it's taking you so doggone long to pack up. Well, at least that's what's happening to me. I mean, the only perk that you can have is you really got to love the drums. That's the perk within itself. I love the drums so much that I'm gonna take on this torture just so I can play for four and a half hours and 50 bucks. 50 bucks don't even fill up my gas tank. I mean, it costs 75 just to fill up my tank. You ain't even gonna give me a tank of gas to play for four hours. And you call this a perk. You lucky I love the drums, man. See, that's why I stopped doing that. That's why I play keys. That's why I make play along tracks.
the six. What are you doing? Trying to. They get it. Here's an example, man. I was trying to give my. I'm gonna put the beep in there too. <laughs> beep you, man. Beep you. <laughs> yeah, I said it. I said it. I said it.